Lex, what do you really want to talk about? That's my always my question to you. That always gets me. That's a good ther. Maybe you are the therapist. But like you and I could talk about pe- anything. People love up until now, at least people have loved listening to the two of us in conversation. Yeah. And my feeling is is that we're not talking about neural nets. And we're not talking about geometric unity, and we're not talking about where distributed computing might go. And I don't think that we're really focused on some of the most exciting things we could do to transform education. We're still caught in this world of other people that we don't belong in. I don't belong in the world as it's been created. I'm trying to build a new world and I'm astounded that the people with the independent means to help build that world are so demotivated that they don't want to build new structures. And the people who do want to build new structures seem to be wild-eyed. Wild-eyed, what do you mean by wild-eyed? They're not, they're not. I uh, guarantee you that I will get some message in my DMs that says, hey, Eric, you know, I'm, I'm a third year uh, chemistry student at uh, you know South Dakota State, and uh, I've got a great idea. I just need funding, I wanna build. So they don't have the means. So the people who have the means uh, have- Or become. the sophistication, or, you know, right. it's like you're looking for somebody who's proven themselves a few times to say, you know, I've got $4 billion behind me uh, that's soft circled. I wanna figure out what a new university would be and what it would take to protect academic freedom and who we would hire and what are, what are the different characteristics because I can clearly see that everything following the current model is falling apart. Nobody, in my understanding, is saying that. Nobody is saying, um, let's take that which is functioning independently and make it less vulnerable. Let's boost those those signals. And a critical component as money, you think? It's not only that, but it's also a kind of, these people are mobbed up, hands off. Let's imagine for the moment that Sundar Pichai, Jack Dorsey, and Mark Zuckerberg um, founded a university come social media entity. Mm-hmm. And they said, this is the purpose of this is to make sure that academic freedom will not perish from this earth because it's necessary to keep us from all going crazy. And we are going to lock ourselves out. We've come up with this governance system. And the idea is, is that these people will be assign the difficult task of making sure that society doesn't go crazy in any particular direction, that we have a fact-based, reality-based, feasibility-based understanding. We can try to figure out where our real opportunities are. So, it, it feels like everybody with, a, with the ability to do something like that and with the, with the brains and experience and the resources would rather sit in the current system and hope to figure out where they can flee to if the whole thing comes apart. Well, yeah, I mean, maybe to push back on a little bit, I, I agree with you, but you know, it feels like there some people are trying that. So, for example, Google purchased DeepMind. Uh, DeepMind is a company that kind of represents a lot of radical ideas. They're, they've become acceptable, actually. AGI, artificial general intelligence, used to be really radical of a thing to talk about, and DeepMind and OpenAI are two places which has made it more acceptable. I know you can now start to criticize, well, they're really, now that it's become acceptable, they're not taking the further step of being more and more radical. But, you know, th- that was an attempt by Google to say uh, that let's let's try some wild stuff. Sort of uh, like Boston Dynamics. Sort of like Boston Dynamics. Boston Dynamics is a really good example of uh, trying radical ideas for perhaps no purpose whatsoever except to try to try out their ideas. Well, and the, the idea is that innovation is like dessert. And you can have dessert after you solve uh, the problem of the main course. And the main course is a bunch of insoluble problems. So the idea is we can get into innovation sure. once we be, once we perfect ourselves. And you're, you're saying that we need to make innovation the, the main meal. Well, I'm saying that there really is structural oppression. I mean, there, if you train uh, a, a, a deep learning system on exclusively white faces, it's gonna get confused. Yeah. So let's not disagree that there are real issues around this. In fact, 
that's an issue of innovation and data. Your, your data should be responsive. On the other hand, there are things we can't do anything about that are actually, you know, fundamental. And um, those things ha may have to do with the fact that, uh, you know, some of us uh, taste cilantro as soap and some of us don't. Like there are differences between people and some of them are in the hardware, some of them are in the firmware, some of them are in the software that is the human mind. And this completely simplistic idea that every failure of, uh, of an organization to promote each person who has particular intersexual characteristics, we cannot hold progress hostage to that. And you've talked about Perhaps we'll save this for another time because it's such a fascinating conversation. You talked about this with uh, Glenn Beck, is the whole sort of stagnation of growth and all that kind of stuff. Your idea is that in as much as the current situation is a kind of uh, Ponzi scheme, the current situation in the United States is a kind of Ponzi scheme built on the promise of constant unending innovation. We need, uh, we need to, fund the true innovators and uh, encourage them and empower them and sort of culturally say that this is what this country is about is well, let's put it this is way. the brilliant minds. We're gonna kill each other if we don't grow. Growth is like an immune system and you always have pathogens present, but if you don't have growth present, you can't fight the pathogens in your society. And right now the pathogens are spreading everywhere. So if we don't get growth into our system fairly quickly, we are in really seriously bad shape. So it's very important that if, if I had a horrible person who was capable of building something that would give us all a certain amount of what I've called financial beta to some new technology where we, we all benefit, let's say quantum computing comes in and everybody, the dry cleaner has a quantum computing angle, right? Yes. Okay. That's necessary to keep this system that we built going. We can try to redesign the system, but our system expects growth. And we've started starved it for growth. And the madness that we're seeing is the failure of our immune system to be able to handle the pathogens that have always been present. So people you know, can say, well, this was always there. Yes, it was. What's changed was your immune system. We have got to make sure that one, we understand why diversity is potentially really important. We have mined certain communities to death. You and I are Ashkenazi Jews. Everyone knows that Ashkenazi Jews are good at technical stuff. We know that the Chinese are good at technical stuff. The Indians have many people who are good at technical stuff, as the Japanese. I also believe that we have communities where, if you think about the Pareto idea of diminishing returns, if you've never mined a community, many of the people you're going to get at the beginning are going to be amazing. Because that community, it's like, did you drill for more oil in Texas? Texas is pretty thoroughly picked over. Do you find some place that's, you know, completely insane? Maybe there's oil there. Who knows? Um, in particular, I would like to displace our reliance on our military competitors in Asia, in our scientific laboratories, with women, with African Americans, Latinos, people who are in different categories than we have traditionally sourced. And I would like to get them the money that the market would normally give these fields were we not using visas in place of payment, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I partic I have a crazy idea, which is that I play, you, you and I both play music, and I find the an analytic work that I do when I'm trying to figure out chord progressions and symmetries and tritones and all these sorts of things to be very similar to the work that I do when I do physics or math. I believe that one of the things that is true is, is that the analytic contributions of African Americans to music are probably fungible to science. I don't know that that's true. It's true, I, I haven't done controlled research, but I believe that it is very important to let the People's Republic of China know that they are not st staffing our laboratories anymore, and that we need to look to our own people. And in particular, we are going to get a huge benefit from making sure that women, uh, black Americans, la Latinos, are in a position to take over some of these things, because many of these communities have been underutilized. 
Now, I don't know if that's an insane idea. I want to hear somebody tell me why it's an insane idea. But I believe that part of what we need to do is we need to recognize that there is there are security issues, there are geopolitical issues with the funding of science. And that what we've done is we've starved our world for innovation. And if we don't get back to the business of innovation, we should be doing diversity and inclusion out of greed rather than guilt. Now, yeah. part of the problem with this is, is that a lot of the energy in, behind diversity and inclusion is based on guilt and accusation. Yeah. And what I want is I want to kick ass. And my hope is, is that diminishing returns favors mining the communities that have not been traditionally mined in order to extract um, output from those communities, unless there's a flaw in that plan. If there's a flaw, somebody needs to tell me. If there isn't a flaw, we need to get greedy about innovation rather than guilty about innovation. That's really brilliantly put. My biggest problem with what I see is, it exactly speaks to that in, in the discussion is diversity. It's used, when it's grounded in guilt, it's then used as a hammer to shame people that don't care about diversity enough. F that shit, okay? So my point is, I'm excited about the idea of Jimi Hendrix doing quantum field theory. <laughs> I'm excited about the idea of, uh, yeah. uh, of uh, Art Tatum trying to figure out uh, what the uh, neural nets figured out about protein folding. Mm -hmm. I have some idea of the level of intellect of people who have not found their way into STEM subjects in incredibly technically demanding areas. And if there's a flaw in that theory, I want somebody to present the flaw. But right now, my belief is, is that these things are merit-based. And if you really believe in structural oppression, you do not want an affirmative action program. You wanna make sure that people have huge amounts of resources to get themselves into position. I wanna push out I just tried this on this clubhouse application. I want to push out Klein bottles as a secret sign uh, inside of rap videos in hip hop, right? Mm -hmm. I want people to have an idea that there's an amazing world. And I want to get the people who hopefully I'm trying to lure into science and engineering. I want to get them paid. I don't want them as the cheap substitutes for the fleeing uh, white males who have learned that they can't make any money in science and engineering. Yeah. So the problem is, is that we need, we need to take over the ship, Lex. And it doesn't need to be you and me, because quite honestly, I have no desire to administer. I don't want to be the chief executive officer of anything. What I do want is I want the baby boomers who've made this mess and can't see it to be gone. They, they, they had almost all of our universities. And I want fresh blood, fresh resources, I want academic freedom and I want greed for our country and for the future to determine diversity and inclusion as opposed to shame and guilt, which is destroying our fabric. That's as good of a diversity statement as I've ever heard.